When the Western world sees food drops to the starving of Africa, we think it will never happen to us. But there's a man in Australia who says that that's where we're heading. I think if we could get Earth in a living and stable state, not a constantly degrading and dying state caused by our actions, then we have one some right to go to the stars. But at present, uh, I don't think we'd be welcome anywhere else in the universe. You wouldn't welcome anybody who'd laid waste to their house and wanted to live in yours, I'm sure. Bill Mollison was born in Stanley, Tasmania. He has spent his life in the Australian wilderness, working, researching and exploring. Through it, he developed a deep understanding of nature, but it led him into conflict with the ideas of his generation. After protesting this and that since the 50s, I decided that opposition wouldn't work. So in 72, I walked away from society cut a hole in the bush, built a house and a barn and put in some plants and decided I'd live separately from society. I think a lot of people have decided that it, throughout history, disgusted with humanity. It wasn't long, I think a matter of weeks, when I'd completed that process that I, uh, I thought, well, am I going to sit here for the rest of my life and let, let the bastards roll over everything? And I thought, no, I'll go back and I'll fight. But then I, then I uh, spent a couple of years deciding on how I would fight. And I decided I wouldn't fight with, with conventional weapons of any sort, but I'd come back in with positivism and with a system. And uh, many of us have been defining what we didn't want. And I thought, well, it's time to define what we do want. And largely that turned out to be permaculture. <laughs> Bill Mollison is a busy man. Fifteen years ago, he thought up a way of saving the world. Now he spends his life promoting it. In 1982, he won fame when he was awarded the alternative Nobel Prize. And now permaculture takes him around the world. We're in Christchurch, New Zealand with National Radio. Bill, what I'd like to get first is what's the basic idea behind permaculture? Well, it's <clears throat> always been a system design of integrating uh, good housing to landscape, at least use of materials and least pollution output, conservation of natural resources. It's actually a very practical design system. How widespread is the movement around the world? Well, we teach in some 30 countries and probably a couple of hundred languages. But our graduates... Welcome. I'd like to quote Robin Francis. She says just exactly what I want to say. There is a major shift apparent in society at large. Awareness is rapidly, is rapidly growing in all sectors. Permaculture is a bit of everything. To some, it is architecture. To others, organic farming. Some say it is a philosophy and a way of life. Others believe it is their only hope. My name is uh, John Prakash Pereira, and I'm from India. Botswana is developing a permaculture extension center. The reason I came on this trip was sort of a work study and sort of a vision quest. Badri Dahal is the name, and I come from the top of the world, Nepal. <laughs> I'm Bill Mollison from Tweed River in northern New South Wales. Australia, <clears throat> where we planted one and a half million trees last year. Um, I, um, as you know, I probably initiated this movement or whatever it is. Permaculture is a design system, but the engineering principles it follows are those of life. Earth evolved from dust and gas and bathed in the energy of a huge hydrogen furnace known as the sun. A living system powerful enough to colonize an entire planet was born.
Mollison looked at this process and saw a model. Here was a system that was stable and fertile, yet became ever more complex. Its greatest expression is to be found in a forest system. These Antarctic beach forests are over a billion years old. They existed on Gondwana land, the land mass that was once Australia and South America. They have remained alive for so long because there are millions of species within them. This complexity makes them adaptable, but at the same time, highly productive. And that is how Mollison believes our own environment should be. We don't think of this as being stable in the sense of a concrete building or a concrete road. It's stable in the sense of the constant adjustments that's being made when we ride a bicycle. It has a dynamic stability. There are hundreds of thousands, millions of things to learn in here. This is not like some machine where we can screw on fittings or put wires between part of the system. Here we rely on a fungus uh, to do their job to make the connection. Therefore, if we lose the forests, we lose our only instructors. And people must see these forests and wilderness as the greatest educational system that we have on the planet. So we'd lose all the universities and we would lose nothing. But if we lose the forests, we lose everything. All political systems that I know of, and most kings, have moved their whole nation to desert. And uh, the things of which they're most proud, the cities and the canals and the irrigation and so on, are the things that killed their cultures. And it continues unabated. If people don't seize power back, and make their own gardens and sit in their own gardens of Eden, then uh, we're all finished. And the whole world turned to dust. Permaculture has always been much more than a gardening system. It arose from questioning of the 60s and the previous questioning of the 1890s and the 1930s about uh, why this society, with all its skills and intelligence and resources, keeps falling into holes of its own making. And the word permaculture really uh, was said to be from permanent agriculture, but I always had it in mind that it was from a permanence in culture itself. Instead of concrete and glass, Mollison thinks we should be building with living resources. He says his ideas will work anyway. All you have to do is plant. This is our farm, it's three square metres. That's a considerable addition to our growing area, another couple of square metres. There's also horizontal space under the next veranda up, which is ideal for grapes. No mould, no rain, no mould. In the broad landscape, we try to make ponds and lakes 15% of the total, and in this landscape we've got about 15% aquaculture which we'll fill up and, and plant, in highly productive plants as well. Uh, this is salad sorrel, good vitamin C, and lastly we'll plant some beans. To climb up this trellis, these are purple climbers. Then we have a garden fennel. In our aquatic system, we have the ordinary watercress, which is a great sandwich and salad plant and very high in minerals, and the Vietnamese watercress, and taro, which we can use. Originally, we can, we can cut some of these and use it as spinach, and then we get a root yield. And we can ferment it and make poi and sing Hawaiian song. 